welcome to our webinar today. Um, the reason why I'm having this webinar is um, obviously with this whole um, lockdown, a lot of people are looking at creating second income streams. Um, and uh, a lot of people have asked me, is it possible to create a, a income from trading? So I had a question, someone asked me this morning, um, you know, realistically, how much starting capital should you start with? And how long will it take before I start making money? And <laughs> I've been involved in this market for many years, and that's one of the hardest questions to ask, to answer because it depends on a lot of things. Number one, obviously, depends on your knowledge and skills level. Number two, it obviously, to a large extent, depends on market conditions, but also depends on your risk appetite. So, um, you know, in the good old days, we used to say, you know, if you want to make 10,000 Rand a month, and the average of the market is about 10, about 20% growth per annum, 10% um, 10,000 10, Rand a month, it's 120,000 a year. At twenty percent, you'll need about six hundred thousand rand starting capital. Um, but uh, we've known also in the last few years the market's been flat to negative. Um, so you know, if you're making five percent uh, and you still want to make ten thousand rand a month, you just understand that your starting cap capital needs to be more, uh, one point two million. Uh, and, or sorry, uh, down to ten percent will be uh, one point two million. If you're looking at uh, ten thousand rand and the market's only giving you five percent. Then you must understand you need much more starting capital. So that was just a basic rule of thumb we used to use in the past, but uh, it depends on a lot of things. As I say, it depends on market conditions. And what we're seeing right now, yes, the market is uh, offering a lot of opportunities for the astute uh, stock picker, number one. And number two, yes, the volatility or the uncertainty on the market is creating a lot of volatility. There are some shares that can move 10% in one day, uh, but also can move down 10% in one day. So yes, there is opportunities there. So um, that is the, the context we're going to take this presentation today. I'm going to focus mainly on, on, on a tool, technical analysis to help you get your timing right, because timing is a critical success factor uh, to, as a trader to make money on the market. But here's a quick uh, agenda, we're going to touch on very, very briefly. Um, trading versus uh, investing a lot of people don't understand that there's two different strategies two different mindsets we'll touch on it again i did it last month but we'll touch on it again because i know that there are a lot of newbies on this um presentation i haven't seen before um we'll touch on some basic technical in indicators how to use drawing tools and then very, very quickly touch on trading plans which is very important as a trader okay so let's get into the nitty gritties trading versus in uh, investing some of you obviously have seen this before. The reason why I put this up, as I said just now, is that people understand, must understand there's two different strategies. As a trader, your time horizon is less than three years. Um, as an as a, as investor, uh, your time horizon is longer. That's a major, the major difference between the investor and the trader is your time horizon. The reason also I use three years is for uh, tax reasons. If you hold a share for at least three years and after three years decide to sell, then capital gains tax applies. So that's the, the, the main reason why we have a three year time horizon. But as a trader, uh, it, it takes much more time. Uh, what we call active management depends on your style. Some of you might be uh, what we call day traders. I call it cowboys. Those are the guys that sit in front of the computer the whole time and they buy and sell, buy and sell a few times a day. Uh, ideally trading the what they call the index futures because that's uh, that gives you the biggest bang for your buck um, but some of you might or majority of you will be what we call swing traders uh, you're trading more of the shares holding it from a few days to a few uh, to a week or so and then some of you might be what we call position traders a bit more longer term so you're not a buy and hold investor but you're still actively buying and selling but over a longer period of time so bottom line as a trader it's more active management um, you'll be using more uh, charts or to technical analysis. Price action is your number one uh, primary indicator. And obviously, volume is, is a confirmation of that price action. But you're looking at technical analysis, looking at charts, and as I said just now, timing is your critical success, success factor. Um, your goal, obviously, uh, is capital growth. Buy low, sell high. Buy something at 10 Rand, sell it at 20 Rand. You made your 20%. Okay. Um, that's how it goes. With, with on the equity side so i'm focusing mainly on the equities today i uh, know with derivatives you can buy buy high and sell low and take advantage of falling markets but in context today we're talking about equities buy low sell high that's how you make money as a trader if i'm buying and selling buying and selling just understand compared to buying and holding you have higher brokerage costs and another thing also you must take in consideration as a trader any profits you make has to be added onto your in, your personal income at the end of the year 
and obviously be paying tax on that. Most you can be pay, the most uh, income tax you'll be paying is 45%. Okay, so just take, be aware of those kind of things when you planning your your trading plan as such. Um, I'm not going to go too much on the on the investor side. Just understand that you're using more the fundamentals. You're looking at the numbers, and uh, as a as an investor, looking for value, looking for bargains and things like that. So I brought in this slide again because I like to I, I coined the phrase um, rational analysis. Some of you might be more fundamentally orientated, using fundamental analysis. Some of you might be using technical analysis. I like to use both. It's like sitting in a canoe. If you just have one or using technical analysis, what's going to go? What's going to happen? You're going to go in circles. Um, so if you've got two ors, one of fundamentals, one of technicals, um, you've got to get your goal further. So bottom line, the more you know about a certain share or sector or industry, you've got to bend the odds into your favor. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. It's this whole thing about uh, being odds in your favor probabilities. So you need to know what must I buy, uh, when must I buy, when must I sell. That is the very basics how you make money on the stock market. Okay. So the reason I'm putting up this slide is if I can buy better quality companies that have growth prospects, um, they have manageable debt, they are profitable, um, I got, I'm getting odds in my favor already. So that's that's the one side of the coin. So you're making your universe smaller by, by uh, taking out the, the, the rubbish. So it's like it's like panning for gold. You want to focus on the gold nuggets and ignore the gravel. So this is what this process does here. You want to focus and create a watch list of potential winners. And if I'm there, fine tune it, fine tune it. And as a trader, I've learned over the years, um, you know, uh, on average, I find most people have about four or five different positions open. More than that, as a trader, it gets a bit, uh, gets a bit too hectic. Okay, so I understand that use rational analysis as, as, a, as a way of betting the odds in your favor, fundamentals and technicals. Okay, so as an investor, as I mentioned just now, is your time horizon, the longer you hold the share, um, uh, more than three years, we call that a investor. So when it comes to technical analysis, yes, we're looking at uh, various um, price action. But even as an investor, my goal is to buy, buy a share now where I think is undervalued and hold it for as long as I can. And uh, through, the, through the long term, through the ups and downs, uh, I'll also be getting some, uh, some dividends and growth in those dividends. As a trader, um, I want to be trading uh, the trend. As I said just now, buy low sell high, reinvest, buy low, sell high, and so it goes on. So as an investor, your first goal, sorry, as a trader, your first goal is to identify the primary trend. Are we in the primary bull market or the primary bear market? Um, the primary bull market, definition of a bull market, is uh, the shares making higher highs and making higher lows. So that's over a long term. Well, from a few from a few months to a few years, that's what we call a, a primary uh, trend. And in this situa situation, an uptrend was a, a bull trend. You also get a downtrend. Obviously, uh, we have lower highs and uh, lower lows. So this was in the bear market. It's a bit shorter than a, than a, than a bull market. Uh, they say it takes longer to walk up the stairs and, and it's faster to jump out the window. So the bear market is shorter and, sh and sharper. Okay, so your goal as a trader is to still identify the long-term primary trend. You want to be trading in the direction of the trend. It's a cliche, the trend's your friend, but it's very true in the market. A lot of people lose money in the market because on the wrong side of the trend. So first of all, so say identify the primary trend. And then within the long-term primary trend, we have what we call a secondary trend. This is the pullbacks. Okay, so within a bull market, we have these little pullbacks. They are called corrections. The market pulls back. This is some profit taking. And I always say, this is where the psychology comes in. Every single point on this graph is a buy and a seller. Someone over here is buying because he thinks his price is going up. Someone is selling to him because he thinks the price is going down. Same thing here. When the price goes up, let me bring my little cursor in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. So someone up top is buying and someone's selling. One of them is wrong. Hopefully it's not you. Someone there is buying and someone's selling. Hopefully it's not you on the wrong side of the market. Okay. But the idea is that um, when the market pulls back like it, as I say, it's profit taking. So you call it correction. So when you read in the newspaper, the market is corrected. Understand it's those short term pullbacks. Last from a few weeks to a few months. Yeah. These little pullbacks. In a downtrend, we have these, these little uh, rallies going against the trend, but you understand that they're also short term. They're shorter than the long term downtrend. So, again, some of you might in the falling market try and take advantage of this. And there's that old saying, don't catch falling knives or catch falling pianos. We saw that in the beginning of March when the, 
They first announced this lockdown and the whole COVID thing and the markets worldwide took a bit of a, a knock. Everybody wanted to jump into the market and a lot of people burnt their fingers because they were catching falling pianos. <laughs> okay. And then we have what they call the minor trend, which is the daily fluctuation. Today's close compared to yesterday's close. Well, today's close compared to last week's close. A lot of us as novice investors, look at a lot of novice traders will look at that on a daily basis and uh, ignore the bigger picture. Okay. So your goal is look at the bigger picture and then zoom in. Okay, so there are three trends, or sorry, two trends. Either your market's trending up or trending down. Okay, in the equity space, you make money with you buy low, sell high. If, if the market's falling in the bear market and you're a long term trader, a long term investor, you have to ride it out. Okay, or uh, as long as you have a diversified portfolio, you'll be managing risk that way. But um, so you've got an uptrend or downtrend, that's what we call. A trending market and then we have a sideways market a third of the time the market's moving sideways if you understand in the upward trend we have more buyers and sellers demand pushing the price up in a downtrend more sellers and buyers pushing the price down yeah if you look at the motion behind this this is greed pushing the price up you're looking at the market's falling it is fear so those are the two big emotions that drive the market so you understand what moves the market is human emotion or market sentiment if you put it more generally in the sideways market you get the buyers and sellers having a bit of a tug of war between the two of them we're waiting for new information either information is positive it's going to break up if it's negative it's going to break down but this sideways market where they call it consolidation a third of the time the market goes through consolidation period so this year and we'll talk about it later as a strategy what we call breakout strategies uh, it presents opportunities for the astute trader yeah so that's just a quick introduction just understand as a buy and hold investor i'm riding out the cycles as a trader or to buy buy low sell high or invest so getting my timing right is important yeah just move uh, here we go let's move to the next one so how do you use basic technical indicators? So first of all, a technical indicators, all those little squiggly lines that you'll see on the chart, those are just tools to help you bend the odds in your favor. So as a starting point, uh, your, your basic primary indicator, I believe, is your price chart. So price action is your primary indicator. And the easiest way of displaying is price action is what we call a line chart. You open the newspaper today, you see a, see a share trading at 10 Rand. Would you buy the share? No, it depends on the trend. Where was the share yesterday? So yesterday the share was 11 Rand, the day before it was 12 Rand, the day before it was 15 Rand, and so it goes on. You understand that the share price is falling. If the price today is 10 Rand and yesterday it was 8 Rand, you understand the price is going up. Okay. You had to connect all those little prices together over the long term to create a line chart. And the line chart will give you a bit of direction where the market's going. And from this, you can also, as in, as your as a trader, your goal is to identify patterns. And as I say, the main thing is to get your timing right and identify the trends. So this is a line chart, basic line chart. So you got two scales, you got the on the on the on the uh, Vertical chart, you got the price. Price is always in cents, and on a horizontal scale, we got time. So those are how we reflect to, uh, on this chart here. Okay, so you can see at the bottom here. And by the way, I'm using what they call viewpoint, and we're going into more detail just now. But on viewpoint, I've got up to five year uh, chart or historical data I can look at. So I've gone all the way back to 2016. I'm here. I'm looking at Anglo American. On the line chart, you can see. I said you just now uh, lower lows, lower highs. This high, so that low is lower than that, uh, higher than that one. That one's higher than that one. That one's higher than that one. You can also see the higher highs. So this was a uptrend, and then we have a bit of a, a sideways. Whoops, go back, and you can see that high is lower than that one, and that's sort of a change in trend. So just by looking at that very basic line chart, you can start identifying a change in trend. As a trader, that's what you want to take advantage of. You can see that this, obviously, this will see our uh, uh, market pullback, a healthy correction we recently saw. We don't talk about crashes anymore, we talk about healthy corrections. So you can see this low here is much lower than that one, and that one there is lower than that one. So you can see the market was telling us already the market is turning around. Yeah. So the same chart, I've just zoomed in now. Anglo American is what we're looking at, what they call a bar chart. So it gives you more information now. Instead of just looking at the closing price for the day, now I'm looking for the high and now I'm looking for the low. Okay, so I can look at that trading range. So the longer that range is, the more volatility. The shorter it is, less volatility. 
A little tick to the left will be the opening price at nine o'clock when the market opens. A little tick to the right will be the, 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 the close. Okay, and that's what all the information that comes out of the JC every day, the open, high, low, and close. And the, and the fourth, your fifth bit of information would be the volume, the number of shares traded. Okay, so from this, you can also look at lower or patterns. You can see there, there is a, what they call a gap. Okay, there's a gap up and there's a gap down, and there's little gaps here. These also tell you a bit more about the market sentiment. Go one step further, and this is the chart that a lot of us will be using, is what we call a Japanese candlestick. Okay, or candlesticks as such. So I'm looking at looking at the relationship where the market opened and where the market closed. If the market closed higher than when it opened, okay, it will be a positive body, what I call what I call a real body. If the market closed lower than it opened, it will be a dark body, be a negative day. Okay. You also get the high and low range, uh, but this relationship between the open and the high very important. Okay. So he yeah, has the same chart you saw just now in Anglo American. And you can see much more information now. You can see that the relationship between the open and high, uh, the uh, the open and the close, is very important. You can see that's very, very small there. You got a high, what they call a wick. Um, and we could you can call they call they call them dojis. You'll see on the next slide. This highlights indecision in the market. The longer the bar, that's where the market opened. That's where the market closed. That's very strong. That's very very bullish. Very strong. Okay, you got also the opposite. That's where the market opened, that's where it closed. That's very, very bearish. You see what I talked about just now, we talk about gaps. So in, in, in candlestick terms, we talk about them as, as windows. Okay, there's windows here, there's a window there, market closed. So that's a, the three basic charts you'll be using. Um, I like to use the, the candlesticks the most because from there, I can pick up a lot of different patterns. And these are the five bullish patterns that that most of you should be knowing. I'm talking about a bullish engulfing. You see that this this day uh, engulfs the previous day, very bullish, changing trend. And all these patterns will be at the bottom of a pullback. So the market is pulled back. And as you start seeing these patterns, you can anticipate a reversal up. You see there's a hammer, looks like a hammer, uh, very long, uh, a lower shadow, or uh, uh, the range at the bottom. That's what they call a arami. Arami is a, a Japanese word for pregnant. That's mommy and that's baby. Okay. You see, that's a negative day. This was a positive day, but it was an indication that there's a high probability of the share going up. It's what they call piercing. So the previous day was a negative day. And then we open up lower, but we close more than halfway over the previous day. And if you see, as I said just now, the doji, the open, the, the open and the close are very much the same, makes like a cross. As I say, this highlights indecision in the market. So that's what they call bullish candlestick patterns. The opposite of that would be bearish candlestick patterns. And by the way, if you click on this here at the bottom, it will highlight for you. There's a lot of information available um, on the internet about candlesticks. Uh, I'm just highlighting five bullish and five bearish for you. So it's just the opposite. But these are just tools that you'll be using and anticipating a change in trend. Yeah. So let's talk about building up on, on that. So that's a, your foundation, the price the price indicators. Then further confirmation is what we call moving averages. And the moving averages is a price-based uh, lagging indicator that so tells you after the fact that the trend has changed, but it gives you confirmation. That's the main thing what moving averages do for you. So it's a great way to, to gauge momentum. Momentum is the rate of change over a period of time. It also uh, confirms the change in trend, as I said just now and highlights areas of support and resistance. On the next slide, you'll see what I mean by that. Uh, but the whole idea that you looked at just now a line chart or a, a candlestick charts, you'll see that the, the, the volatility is there. Moving averages smoke, uh, smooths out that volatility, what we call the noise. Okay, so you can see more regular pattern in the market. And from there, obviously, um, look at identify uh, uh, turning points in that. There's various ways of, of using it. We're talking about a simple moving average, exponential moving average, and weighted moving averages. Um, different ways of using it. I, in this presentation, I'm, I'm talking about exponential moving averages. It's just that the latest price has a more uh, has more relevance than on, on yesterday's price than 21 days ago, or whatever the case might be. Um, so it's more sensitive to price. That's what exponential. So it's being multiplied by exponent. So uh, just understand the exponential moving averages are more sensitive, uh, same as weighted. But this is what I was talking about just now. So yeah, I've got a, a nine, a 15, and a 21 day period. You can choose whatever you want to, and you can put as many moving averages as you want to. Okay, so uh, in this situation, as I say, they're all expon exponential moving averages, EMA. 
uh, when the share prices, when the when the when the nine day crosses over the fifteen day and the fifteen day crosses the twenty one day, we have that change in trend. So you can see here the prices were dropping, the moving averages were above the moving above the share price, and then they cross. That's a confirmation change in trend. And when they cross down again, we have a confirmation change in trend. You can see the moving averages went from below the moving below the share price to above it, change in trend. That was a very, very strong sell signal. First of all, we got a very long negative uh, or bearish uh, uh, bar, bar for that day or candle for that day, as well as the crossover of the moving averages. And so just now about support and resistance there, see the market rallied and bounces into this, what I call uh, a, a traders action market, uh, but it, it acts as like a resistance level. And we're talking about resistance just now, it's like a ceiling. Uh, the market falls away back. But again, this is, I'm looking at the top 40 index here. So looking at a, a barometer of a whole lot of shares, the market rallies and it starts going up through the, the nine day, then the 15 day, and then the 21 day. And all those three moving averages cross, we have a confirmation of change in trend. We're going from a downtrend to an uptrend. So we, when I mentioned just now, a lagging indicator or a reactive, it confirms afterwards that the market is, is is changed okay you can see also the market pulls back it holds bounces into that area bounces off in that area bounces off that area and that's what i mean by acting as a support support is a floor so it, it holds the prices up yeah it pushes the prices down when it comes to resistance okay so what i like to do also is to use longer moving averages yeah i'm looking at a, at, at a five-year chart of anglo-american and I'm using a 50-day and a 200-day moving average. It's the crossover of the two moving averages in this scenario, when the 50-day crosses above the 200-day moving average, I have what they call a bullish change in trend. It's what they call the golden cross. So anything above this is very, very bullish. So the long-term trend is bullish, it's positive. The opposite is when the share price crosses, uh, the 50-day crosses below the 200-day, we call that very bearish and it's very negative. Yeah, I'm looking at a PPC, you can see as long as the share price stays below those moving averages, the trade is down. Okay, so those are the ways of identifying the long-term trend. I mentioned just now that as a, as a trader, you want to establish are we in a bull market or bear market. This is one of the best ways to do it is to use a long-term moving average, especially two, a 50-day and the 200-day moving average. Okay, so let's move on to the very, uh, some uh, some indicators because of time constraints. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of indicators out there. Um, the viewpoint software is about uh, about sixty or seventy uh, indicators and a lot of drawing tools. But I can tell you now, you were using a handful, most about five or six indicators. And the RSI and the and the stochastic are the two most popular ones, been around for many many years. They work. Um, so first of all, we have what they call an RSI indicator. The, the real word for it is a relative strength index. Don't confuse, don't get confused between a relative strength indicator and an RSI indicator. One looks at one data stream divided by another data stream. One share is getting stronger or weaker relative to something else. This is looking at at a um, the change in trend, the magnitude, the speed. So basically, there's a little formula involved. So what's nice about this, I can standardize the scale. I can compare one share to another share just to determine um, if it's overbought or oversold. And I'll talk about those terminology also. I'm not going to go too much into the to the formula. Just understand if I'm using a 14-day period and over a 14-day period, um, we have, we have um, more highs than, than lows, then you'll find that on the, on the scale of zero to, to, to 100, be closer to, if it was more uh, closer to the highs, it'd be closer to, to 100. And if it was closer to to the, to the lows, it would be closer to the um, uh, to the zero. You find that the RSI scale, the scales or the, the the two levels, overbought and oversold levels, are 30 and 70. I'll show you in the next slide in more detail. Very similar indicators, but this is looking at different criteria. Stochastic indicator looks at the relationship of the close relative to the high-low range. Now, again, this. Um, a little formula involved here. I'm not going to take too much detail. Oh, this shows you what the, the one line is, what they call a the percentage K, and the other line is what they call a percentage D. So basically, it will be a, a moving average of the period. So it's in this scenario, it's a three day moving average and just smooths out the data. But in both such scenarios, you'll find that there's three they can use it in three ways overboard and oversold levels, and divergences, and bull and bear signals. Yeah, but uh, there we go. This is the 
uh, how to use it. So this, whoops, let's go back one slide. So this is the RSI indicator. How do you bring it up? So first of all, if you're looking on, on the viewpoint, that, that little cursor, let me bring my cursor back again. There's things first. If you click on that little indicator there, okay? That's where you change from a line chart to a bar chart to candlesticks and things like that. That's where you change the, the price indicators. If you click on that little button there, it brings up a, a list of all the indicators, okay? And that's what I've selected from there. I've selected RSI and the stochastic. Okay, you can see both of them by default is 14-day period, okay? And I suggest you use a 14-day period. The guys that created these indicators back tested it, and these are the two, two periods that do work. Okay, but you can see on the RSI indicator, uh, there's 70 and there's 30. So anything below 30 is what we call oversold. There's more sellers and buyers pushing the price down, so the market gets oversold. And as a trader, when's the best time to buy? When else is selling, you want to be buying. So when it gets to oversold scenario, I want to buy. When it gets to overbought series, this, one, this share doesn't get very overbought very quick, very um, often. You can see the most it gets to will be about 65, but anything above that will be what we call seriously overbought. Okay, on a stochastic indicator, very similar, as I say, that's your percentage K is a blue line, and then percentage D will be that's like a moving average of that of that line. You can see, yeah, we're talking about a 80 line and a 20. So very similar. Um, but the, when it gets below it, below 20, moves down and it moves up again, that will be your buy signal, but it gets into oversold territory, moves above your 80 and we're getting to overbought territory. In other words, it's too late to go buy the share when it's an overbought territory. A lot of people go buy the share up top here. Remember, you want to buy low and sell high. So buy when it's overbought and you want to sell when it's oversold. Get excited when everybody else is selling and, get, and then obviously uh, get out where else wants to buy. So, Whereas the moving averages are lagging indicators, or assigned stochastic are leading indicators. So one of the ways of being a leading indicator is what they call divergence. So this is what we call bullish divergence. The share price is making new lows. You can see that low is lower than that one. But the indicator is failing to confirm that. That high is higher than that one. So it's doing the opposite, so it's diverging. It's telling you, watch out, the share will be changing direction soon. And there we go, that was a change in direction. So as a trader, you'll be able to anticipate these changing trends. As you can see it's below the moving averages. Uh, it's all very, very negative. And then based on the on the uh, uh, candlestick uh, price patterns, and you'll learn about these price patterns. You can see uh, that was a bullish candle. The next day, was, you can see a nice little V there. And so the market ran up. Yeah. You got confirmation from both indicators, the RSI and the stochastic. Told you, watch out, this should be changing direction. So you can see how you can start being the odds in your favor. I just find anticipating that scenario. We go into another example. So that was a bullish a bullish divergence. He has example, whoops, sorry. He has example of a bearish divergence. So yeah, I'm looking at Harmony Gold. The share price is making new highs there. Okay, making new highs, that high is higher than that one, indicator is doing the opposite. That high is lower than that one. It's doing the opposite, failing to confirm that. Watch out, the share will be changing direction. Voila, there we go. Okay. Um, same thing here, the share is making new highs there, failing to confirm. Watch out, it's going to change direction. Okay, one thing I want to highlight, you can see here the stochastic indicator was seriously oversold, but your RSI wasn't there. So in the previous slide, you want to see the scenario where they're both doing it together. So just if you can get both indicators together, uh, that'd be great. But most of the time they fail to confirm. And this is what I find is one of the biggest challenges of using low technical indicators. You won't get confirmation from lower indicators. You're going to get more confused. That's why I like to use the price action as my, my primary indicator. Okay. Whoops, here we go. Let me just bring this back. Here's my mouse. Yeah, so let's talk about MACD indicator. MACD um, is a great indicator in the sense that it works well in both markets, a training market and a, a, a sideways market. But again, it, it's used for identifying momentum, rate of change over a period of time, trend direction, and trend duration. Okay, so basically, it's again, two indicators. It's a difference between two moving averages. The difference between a 26-day period and a 12-day experiential moving average. 
So there's a difference between that, creates a third indicator, and then we put a fourth indicator on top of that, what we call a signal line. I know it sounds very complicated, but to understand it, you don't understand, have to understand how it's made, just understand how it works. Okay, so you can use it again three different ways, the crossover of the signal line, or the zero line, or again, divergence. Okay, so MACD, as I say, as it's plotted at the bottom, it's a difference between the two, Okay, it has a third line, and we put a fourth line on top of that one there. Okay, so it's your nine day trigger. So, first of all, you can see it highlights overbought and oversold le uh, levels. So again, here we got our zero line in the middle. Okay, and then anything below the zero line, you can see that's seriously oversold. You can see on average, uh, oversold it gets. Uh, the one thing important to understand with RSI and stochastic are a range between zero and 100. This has not got a range, and that's a challenge with overbought and oversold levels on the MACD. This is unique to this share. So you can go historically and say, okay, this is seriously oversold. It hasn't been done here for a long time, okay? You see that this high is low, high, uh, this low is higher than that one, and, and so it goes on. But there's, as I said, various ways to use it. So I can use a crossover of what they call the signal line. I call it the trigger line. So when the, the, the MACD goes through the signal line, I'll buy. You can see I'm not getting right at the bottom, okay? I, must, I might be missing the first 10%. And when it comes down through it, I'll be selling. So I'm not getting out the right top. I might, might be missing the top top 10%. But if I can take advantage of the 80% in between, that's what you're trying to do, okay? Take, try to take advantage of that line. So um, yeah, I'll buy again and then I'll sell. In that scenario, you can see that I'm not going to make very much a profit just based on that there. Again, there, buy and sell. Buy and sell. Again, not very much profit there. By the way, uh, another thing that you have to take into consideration is what they call the histogram. And this helps you with momentum. I use the histogram a lot to give me an early warning signal. So um, you can see that was very strong momentum built into the again. All it is that histogram is the gap between the, these two lines. And as the gap narrows, and that's how we go into a negative line again. Okay, but it's, a, it's an early warning signal, put it that way. So that's one way to use it. It's what they call the signal line. Another way of using it is called the zero line. So instead of buying over here now, I'm a bit more conservative. I wait for the crossover there. So I'm getting in a bit later, and I get out a bit later. Okay, get in a bit later, get out a bit later. So your trades are not so often, but uh, again, uh, I might be missing the top tip, uh, the bottom ten percent, and getting out the top ten percent. So there's various ways of using it. Uh, well, two ways of using it: the crossover of the of the zero, zero line and of the signal line. And again, you can also use it for divergence. That's yeah, giving you confirmation. So you combine all three together: your RSI, stochastic, and your MACD, and they're all giving you divergence, uh, divergence signals. You know, watch out! The should be changing direction. Okay, so what I've looked at here is all indicators based on price. One thing I'm not going to talk about today is volume action. That's very, very important, and that's for another presentation some other time. But just understand, this is a way of, of highlighting opportunities in the market for you. So how do you make money in the market? If I can identify the bottom of the market, that highlights for me opportunity, and that's how you make the money, and that's how you make income. So this can be a few days, can be a few weeks. This scenario it was uh, a few days. Let's move it there. Okay. This is what I suggest you use. Well, this, what I prefer to use is drain tools to help me get in and out the market or in and out the share. So, very, very basically, I touched on it just now. We spoke about support and resistance. When the share price moves up, we hit area of resistance. In other words, there's more sellers coming to the market. The price will pull back. Okay. As soon as it goes up above the previous high or previous uh, resistance level, that'll be your confirmation change in trend. Okay, so break it above resistance is, is a buy signal. Uh, the market goes up again. Again, remember every single point in this graph is a buy and a sell them. With area of resistance, some of the pop here is bought usually a, a round number on a buy 10 rand and I want to sell at 20 rand. And that's so uh, you find a lot of people do that. Okay, so that, yeah, we people taking the profits at 20 rand, the market pulls back, it's about about 15 rand. And the minute we break above that again, then it will be a confirmation change in trend and it'll be a buy signal. Okay. What's also interesting to note, this highlights turning points for you. Previous resistance will be a support level. So support is where a lot of buyers will come in. So resistance are sellers and buyer and, and support are, are the buyers. So it goes on. So in the rising market, resistance will become support. In the falling market, uh, yeah, there are the buyers there are, 
push the price up and the guys will take the profits and go back and the minute the guys didn't get out the first time they'll be getting out now they're breaking even but we break out through that support level more sellers coming to the market pushes the price down that will be a confirmation change in trend again the market rallies Okay, previous support will be a resistance level, so it goes on. In a sideways market, obviously, these are our resistance levels and it is our support. We need to break up above and support uh, 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 those lines as such. So, first thing I want to highlight for you is what they call a trend line. The idea is to find a prominent low, project it to the second point, and ideally to your third point. The more times it touches, the more reliable the, share, the, the, the trend line is. The longer it takes, the more reliable the trend line is. So um, you can see also, uh, I like to use my technical analysis and make it very uh, colorful. So support, I like, I like to use my, my support trend lines, make them red, um, and my resistance trend lines, I, might, I like to make them in blue. Okay, so the more visual you can make it, it's going to help you as a tool. Okay, so yeah, I've drawn from, drawn from there. I know I've done it with um, hindsight. Yes, I could have touched there, touched there, and would have gone off with a tangent. But I could also just manipulate it. And this is important to understand. These things are being manipulated. It's a tool for you to make a decision. But it touched once, came very close to there, came very close to there. But anyway, touched once, touched twice, three times, four times. That's a reliable trend line. See, it creates a channel. As long as the share price stayed in that channel, the trend was up. There's my moving averages. So here's my 50 day. So as long as I stayed above my 50-day moving average, the trend was up. And here's my long-term 200-day moving average. So the long-term 200-day moving average tells me that the trend was still up. The minute it broke down through my, my, my support trend line, I had a change in trend. You can see it also broke below it and stayed below my 50-day moving average. It broke through my, my 200-day moving average. I still need these two moving averages to cross over each other, my 50-day to go below my, my, my 200-day to confirm a change in trend long-term. So my primary long-term trend bull market is still intact. Okay, But that there would have been a change in trend. Yeah, I can even make it shorter and draw my little trend lines a bit higher. And that's where the candlesticks come in uh, as such. Just understand trend lines are diagonal, okay, whereas uh, horizontal and, and uh, sorry, supporting resistance levels are horizontal. So yeah, I'm looking at uh, Aspen. You can see for a long time the share price moves sideways. Um, at heating resistance, heating resistance doesn't break up above that. Okay, so that's a very important resistance level for this chair to move from a sideways consolidation pattern. We need to break above this long-term resistance level. You also see a previous a previous uh, uh, support become a previous resistance become support this side. Okay, you can see a, basically a channel. So I can work out or calculate the difference between. The, the support and resistance and that there would help me anticipate a change in trend. If this breaks up, I, that there will most of the time be a price target, that same distance. So let's say, for example, that was 10 Rand and that's 15 Rand. I know the gap is 5 Rand. On a breakout at, at, at 15 Rand, I think my target price will be, will be at, at 20 Rand. That's one of the easiest uh, uh, ways of, of calculating a target price is to use uh, chart patterns like a six, or they call it a rectangle pattern. Okay, so this helps you anticipate where the market's going. And again, combining all this together with your indicators will be in the odds in your favor. And another tool I like to use, anticipate pullbacks, is what they call a Fibonacci retracement. By the way, if I click on this here on the indicators, just now you saw this is where you select your, uh, that's your price chart, that's where you select your indicators. If you click this little button here, it opens up all your indicators on the side here. You just double click on that, it'll be your trend lines. You double click on that again, gives you a whole lot of different options. Double click on that, and you can choose a whole lot of different uh, drawing tools from that. This is the Fibonacci retracement. All it is, I've drawn from a prominent low. You can see the little dotted line from a prominent low to a prominent high. It will automatically calculate levels of drawing horizontal lines. Okay, and there's four very important levels to look at. Automatically calculates these little pullback areas. So these are what they call Fibonacci ratios. Okay, in in in, uh, in the percentage terms, very important to look at: a 23 percent, a 38, 50 percent, and 61 percent. So the red area, yeah, the market pulls back at least 23 percent, and you can see from there we are very close to it. You can see now we're looking at that area. That area there is very close. Okay, 50. Sorry, the um, 
the 38 percent down here and the 50 percent i like to use the 50 percent a lot you can see there's 50 percent market pullback 50 percent that's an important support level yeah it's come back there you can see it's touched twice and it came to my my my, my trend lines only touched it twice so far but anticipate this will be going forward an important level okay remember i'll be adjusting this up and up and up uh and so it goes on so that's in the rising market I can anticipate, I get excited when the market breaks through my support trend line, number one and number two, it pulls into what I like to call blue area. My blue area, my, the green to the blue area would be a ideal buying area for me. Okay. And I can do the opposite. If the price is falling, just do my cursor in here. Price is falling, I just do the opposite, draw from a prominent low to prominent, to, to, from a prominent high to a prominent low. Uh, this is Settle. You see again, Settle was moving sideways for a long time. Very important. Uh, it was a double top. Uh, we can see resistance there. And for a long time, this was a very crucial, important uh, uh, support level. Broke through it. That was changing trend. Okay. And that also happens to be very, very close to my 61%. That's the market has to pull back. You see this year, before we had a little gap, inversely would be my 23%. And that is at 160 rand. So just to get to where we are now, I took a slide yesterday, that the share price has to double to get to that level there. So you can see it way below the moving averages. Uh, this is again the 50-day the and the 200-day moving average. That was a, a bearish signal there. This is all bad news for Sassel if I'm looking at, at, at getting into it now. It's got a long way to go before I have a change in trend. I can draw a trend line yeah. And say yes, it's, it's, again, around about this level here, my 38% will be my change in trend for me to trigger. Yes, I can bring in and, and, and buy and anticipate this little market moving up, but that's to me is a high risk trade. Okay, remember it's a high probability on being odds in my favor. Okay, just quickly touching on trading plans, very, very important. Um, 10 things you want to look at, skill assessment, ask yourself a question, are you ready to trade, mental preparation, very important, how you feel, did you have a good night's sleep, etc. Your risk level, very, very important. How much are you going to risk per trade, between 1% and 5% of your portfolio? Set goals, and this is important. Set realistic profit targets and risk and reward ratios. You never risk more than, uh, 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 if I want to make a risk reward ratio, risk one rand to make two rand. That is what you should be looking at, minimum. Ideally, one to three, one to four. Okay. Do your homework. Do your research, as I mentioned just now. Trade preparation. How did the market close overnight? Look at the trades and things like that. Look what happened on Bloomberg's. And then in the morning, confirm your trade, your trade before you putting it on. Before getting into the trade, understand where you're going to get out. So your exit rule is very important. Number one is your stop loss. Where am I going to get out if the market goes against me? And number two, where's my take profit? That's before you put on the trade. Then you put in your entry trade. So understand those rules, and these are, you can go into more detail. You can find a lot of information on Investopedia. You go follow this link. Keep records because this is one way to learn and find tune yourself. And to answer the question about uh, how do you make money over the long term, is through time experience. And that's with wisdom. Okay, uh, you learn the hard way, and then analyze your performance. The, you know, it's like a funnel. You learn by your mistakes. Uh, identify breakout trading. Identify the uh, candidate, uh, wait for the breakout, set a reasonable price objective. Allow the, so these are the seven steps you'll have to take to do this. Uh, so what I do is in viewpoint, I create myself a widget and I split the screen up between my watch list and I've just zoomed in just on the share codes. Okay. So first of all, yeah, I select uh, as a watch list my top 40 shares. So these are just the top 40 stocks. I create uh, number one, uh, the, the, my watch list, number two, uh, I select the share, sorry, um, yeah, number two, I put all my indicators in and I create a template and I save it. So these are my, the three indicators we spoke about today. And I use it as a template. And number three, I add my drawing tools. So each time I, I look at the share, I don't have to, I only have to do it once, the anticipation of a breakout. Okay, so every day I just click on the next share, next share, next share, and so it goes on. So I scroll through my watch list and that's how I look for opportunities. So I anticipate, this is looking at uh, uh, Richmond. So one of these days, anticipate we are we will we, we'll change direction soon. Anticipate a breakout above that resistance level. So yes, I'm going to contradict myself. I say buy low and sell high. Yeah, I'm going to say buy high and sell high. Yeah. So we break above this level. Yeah, anticipate we're going to retest this previous high way up top here. Okay. Very important that I bring my stop loss just over there. 
So here's another example. Yes, clicks. So clicks has pulled back off the results. You can see it's moving sideways. Anticipate the breakout of this, the sideways consolidation pattern. If it breaks up, anticipate the, at least the gap between the, the two of them, that distance to go up. We might go retest our previous highs. Okay, you can see it's a very important resistance level there. So we might go retest that at least. But from where we are now, it's a high probability trade. Okay. So how would you do it from here? It's the same shit we're looking at here. Yeah, clicks. I'll go click on this little button on top here, and then I'll, I'll be putting my trade. So all you basically do is enter your 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 uh, entry point, you protect your losses. So from here, I can set up my stop loss and set up my take profit all in one. Okay. So guys, I know I've gone over time. I get excited when I talk too much. But basically, uh, before we handle any questions, we spoke about today. And this is my experience over time that your best best indicator is your price, uh, be it candlesticks, price action is your best way of looking at indicators. So yes, we spoke about the basics. I, I use them as secondary indicators, RSI, stochastic, MACD. I do use moving averages on top of my, my, my price charts as a primary action. Okay, I spoke about one strategy today. There are a lot of strategies out here. So we're talking about a breakout strategy. Okay, but uh, for those of you that are just starting out, uh, uh, trading, I suggest go look at it, go do some more homework, go look at our online tutorials, um, you'll click on this link here to take you to the online uh, um, the tutorials and gives you more information. So I'm offering you guys the opportunity today to subscribe to Viewpoint. If you go to, once you log into the PSG Online website, next to the logout button you'll find like, like a character, if you click on it, it says profile, from profile you can click on subscribe to Viewpoint. If you subscribe to Viewpoint today, you'll be active tomorrow, but I'm giving you a free trial for 30 days, okay? Very important, and this is being recorded, is that you email me so I can put it onto a list that you'll have access to 30 days until the end of June um, to test it out, to see what it's all about, okay? Um, and then um, after 30 of June, uh, or end of, end of June, if you want to carry on ahead, and then it'll be 200, 230 rand a month. Okay, it's a great tool to help you make more informed decisions. So it's more for the serious trader. So you have to ask yourself today, am I a serious trader? Do you want to learn about it? And by the way, all these technical indicators I spoke about today have very extensive online help facilities on the Viewpoint program. Okay, so as I said, this program, this uh, webinar is being recorded. I'll be sending out the presentation either tomorrow or on Friday. So let's see what questions you guys got. I know I've gone over board here. Okay. Yeah, Peter, uh, Viewpoint is Iris. So what you're seeing at the moment on the Iris platform, when you click Investor, that's the baby. That's the baby version of, it's more a deal more for the long-term buy and hold investor. Um, if you want to be more serious as a trader, uh, there's a button on, 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 the, on the website um, called Viewpoint, and it's just a more advanced version. So stop, uh, Viewpoint belongs to Iris. So it's the same company. Okay, it's just more advanced. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, that looks like all the questions. Wow. Yeah. So, cool, guys. Doesn't look like any more questions there. So, from my side, any questions you have, please drop us an email. Send, send an email to wealth at psg.co.za. You can also get us on our or our toll free line 0860 000 Obviously, we're all working from home, so the calls do get redirected to our, to our cell phones. But from my side, um, anything in this presentation today was not uh, uh, for uh, any tips or anything like that. I'm going to give you financial advice. So, here's my disclaimer it was all for education purposes only. From my side, thank you very much for being on this webinar. Until next time, all the best. Bye for now.